I think it's interesting that if you ask people 10 years ago uh, about how AI was gonna have an impact, with a lot of confidence, almost most people, you would have heard, you know, first it's gonna come for the blue collar jobs, working in factories, truck drivers, whatever. Then it will come for the kind of like the low skill white collar jobs, then the very high skill, like really high IQ, uh, white collar jobs, like a programmer or whatever. And very last of all, maybe never, it, it's gonna take the creative jobs. And it's really not exactly, you know, and it's going exactly the other direction. This is insane and it changes everything instantly. People in our industry are just filled with scarcity mindset and they just think the first new thing that comes out that they don't know about, they just think that's gonna take their job. And I'm here to tell you that's not the case. So what can we do instead? One thing that I will tell you is that all the technical jobs and the grunt work is out the door. Think about it from a color grading perspective, shot matching is gonna be the first thing that AI is gonna attack and completely dominate. But when it comes to color grading, that it just can't be really achieved right away. Why? Because it requires soul, it requires intuition, it requires things that AI is not doing so far. Right now, it's like a supercharged search engine that can put some things together and give you something that can blow your mind, but not necessarily invent things at this moment. What can we do and how can we use this technology? We're gonna see how directors, cinematographers, freelancers, colorists, and content creators can put these tools to use. I just really hope that from this video, you guys are gonna get something that you haven't thought of. I'm not giving you anything brand new, okay? As a matter of fact, I went online and did my own research. I know 0.1% of what these tools can do, but the strength of this video is gonna be that it's very contextualized. So we're gonna start off with the content creator scenario. And it happened yesterday. So my wife and I were just brainstorming about Instagram Reels and TikTok ideas. And this is what came of it, right? So she said, hey, why don't you ask, give me a synopsis on the movie Inception. That's what I typed in and this is what happened. Now, I promise you it's not that easy. Even if you go on IMDb and try to look at it, it's basically a bunch of different synopsis written by people and then you have to find one and they could be lengthy and then what are you gonna do? You have to summarize it. There's a lot of manual labor that still goes into it. Whereas here, done. So now what can we do? We did this and that was also my wife's idea. So she said, create a seven question trivia based on this. So now look at this. Before ChatGPT came out, what it used to take to do this. Like that would be an hour of her job or my job to just go through and collect that information manually and cross-reference it and make sure it's correct. Okay, another thing she said is this. Give me four answers for each with one correct answer. It's trying to interpret my question and let's see what it does. I don't know, this just blows my mind how crazy this is. And obviously it gave me an answer. It's just like the way I phrased this question because the first time we did it, it actually gave us a correct answer. So right now I feel like we still have to do a little bit of a manual labor to find the correct answer, but we already have a description, right? So like all the answers are there or what we can do is pick out the right answers for each one. I don't know if this is gonna do it, but let's see. Okay, there you go. So guys, look at this. If you've been using it like a pro and you're doing these things, it's amazing. But I feel like once we put it in a context, it changes everything. So the poster is already prepared, right? Like we got all the answers. You know what she said? Like after this happened, she said, can you take a picture of this and send it to me? And that was our post and it took this long. We still have to know what we are asking. We still have to use logic to, to phrase our questions properly. So that is one scenario, okay, for content creators. Now we're gonna move on. And what I'm gonna use right now is I'm gonna give you an example of a colorist and again, content creator. So let's say I ask, what is color gamut? Like the reason why it's taking this long is because it's always flooded and there's so many people using it all day long. So it's not like my internet is slow or anything like that. People are just going nuts about it, right? A color gamut is a range of colors that a device such as a display or printer is capable of reproducing. It is typically represented as a graphical plot of the colors in a color space such as the CIE, XYZ color space, blah, 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 blah. Crazy, right? Explain to a five-year-old 
We want to explain these concepts in a way where everybody can understand it. My mom and dad can understand it. My son can understand it. Everybody. A color gamut is like a box of crayons, just like how a box of crayons has different colors that you can use to color with. A color gamut is a set of different colors that a screen or printer can make. Okay. Create a two minute video script on this. Look at this opening shot of the box of crayons. Narrator, have you ever wondered how your computer screen or printer can show so many different colors? Just like a box of crayons has different colors that you can use to draw with, a color gamut is a set of different colors that a screen or printer can make. Da da da. da. Like I used to go to Starbucks, I used to get a cup of coffee, and I would spend first half of my day just coming up with concepts, coming up with ideas, writing everything down, having the imposter syndrome, I'm not the best writer. How can I reword this? What can I do using different apps to kind of rephrase my things? Closing shot of the box of crayons narrator. So next time you're looking for a new computer screen or printer, keep in mind that a big color gamut is like a box of crayons. The more colors it can make, the more beautiful your picture will be. And obviously we can go in, we can use this as a base and then add our own flair on top of it. None of these technologies are just like, you know, supposedly used verbatim, right? Just take this for what it is and that's it printed. But we can build everything off of that. Okay, let's take it a step further, right? So create a super brief email about this. Actually, what we should do is create a super brief email about the latest YouTube video on this my latest YouTube video on this. Okay, let's just keep making it more contextual. So now it's going to create a framework that I can just copy, paste, modify, send it to my subscribers. Obviously, again, make it mine, be authentic. And then what I can do is this. Hey everyone, today I want to talk about something that may not seem super exciting, but trust me, it's important. Color gamut, exclamation mark. It knows that it's creating this post for Instagram, so it's doing all the things to make it juicy and for people to actually read it. And now, relevant hashtags. Give me relevant hashtags. So no more subscribing to those super spammy websites or apps like where you get generic hashtags because they're not contextualized and they're just popular hashtags that will basically shadow ban your account, right? Because everybody is spamming that stuff. So that was a great example for how colorists and content creators can use it. All right, so moving on to another example, this one is gonna be for creative directors and cinematographer. Let's just say best filming locations for a car commercial. Okay, look at this. Some popular filming locations for car commercials include scenic roads with beautiful views, city streets with iconic landmarks and racetracks. Like already is giving us so many options, but let's just say popular locations in LA for a car commercial. Let's say I'm in LA and I wanna go tomorrow. I'm a cinematographer. I wanna go and scout these locations. Okay, so check this out. The LA River is a great spot for commercials that want to showcase the car's ruggedness and off-road capabilities. Done, right? Now just go Google these spots or Google map it and then go look these locations up. You know exactly what you're looking for. You can keep deep diving, but this gives you an idea of like how a cinematographer and a creative director might use this tool to kick it off. Like I worked on commercial concepts with ad agencies and these steps are the hardest because you're always just spending hours, days online reading random blogs and articles that are not going to be tailor-made to exactly what you're looking for as opposed to this. All right, so now we're moving on to something for directors and colorists. So let's say we look up, I'm doing a movie and it's a detective drama or a TV show. So I go top 10 detective shows of the last decade. Excellent. Sherlock Holmes, True Detective. 
Broad Church, haven't seen it, but on the list, Mindhunter, Fargo, amazing. The Killing, great. The Bridge, also on the list. The Fall, loved it. Happy Valley is on the list. And then Bosch, loved it. So here's a list of all of them, right? Amazing. Killed it. Did a perfect job. Now we can go, what is Mindhunter about? So it's going to go ahead and just give us a perfect description. Okay, now I go, interesting. The colorist kind of whispers in the director's ear, hey, what was the color theory? So what's the color theme of the show? Let's just see if this can actually do it. So Mindhunter is known for its dark and muted color palette. And right there, the show primarily uses a lot of earthy tones like brown, green, and gray. So even all the people that watch my videos and want to learn some terminology or understand like what makes certain show or movie what it is dude you don't have to like google and spend hours trying to figure it out watch random videos that will title something clickbait you and not even give you the information you can just type it in here and just done so like that is going to be a perfect example for directors slash colorists to benefit with this tool and now we're going to move on and look at an example for a freelancer. And now we're going to just jump to the next tool, which is Tome. So this is an incredible presentation creator. Absolutely insane. And it is running on Dolly and also Chat GPT. So it's using both of those under the hood and creates the most juicy presentations you will ever create like this. Let's just tell it, create a presentation on color theory and what each color means. This is extremely effective for freelancers because most of our time is spent creating decks and pitching like what kind of looks are we thinking? What can we bring to the table? And if you really want a head start and a leg up on your competition, the more professional your pitch deck is, like it's going to take you really far. So let's look at it. Our cover page is a colorful journey explaining color theory. Gives us like the agenda, right? Introduction to color theory. Color theory is a set of principles used to create a harmonious color palette. It helps us understand how color interact and how to use them to create a desired effect. And then look at this. So it's creating images, original images using Dolly. So that's another exciting thing, but it's super, super easy and very interactive. So I just clicked on it right here, right? I can just go here and I can just say add tile. I can do generate more colors or I can just completely replace this image. I can bring in my own image and replace it. I can grab this. I can move it around wherever I want to put it. It's just that simple. And look at this, the color wheel. Color wheel is used to create color schemes and to understand how colors interact with each other. When I created this video for you guys back in the day, it took so much research and work and just what I knew. I was literally going through my textbook from school on cinematography and pulling out clippings and like adding all of that in here to create that video for you guys. And look at this color symbolism. For example, red can signify danger or passion, while blue can signify calmness and sadness. This should just give you an idea of like, how crazy this tool is. I can go so far with this. I'll give you another example. This just keeps getting crazier and crazier. Okay, so create a presentation on Christopher Nolan's top five movies and why you should watch them. Let's go through this. This is actually going to be exciting. And the cool thing is, Every time you generate it, it's completely different. The images are completely different because the images are being created by AI. So everything is always different. Even if you type in the same exact like terms, everything, it's going to give you a different result. Christopher Nolan's Must See Movies, A Cinematic Journey. Okay, so it gives you a list. Look at this. Uh, the Dark Knight like gives you all the information that you need. Obviously, again, if it's too wordy, I'm actually going to show you the next tool that can help you with that. And that tool is not even supposed to be mentioned in this video, but I think you're going to find it interesting. Inception, same thing goes through, tells you everything. Images are like very applicable to like what the movies were, right? Interstellar gives us all the description about the prestige, memento, all of that. So let's just say now I go in and I take the Dark Knight and I go 
okay, man, it's a bit too wordy, right? So what I can do is I can grab this, copy it. I can bring it to this tool called quillbot.com and I can say paste text. And now I'm gonna say, take all of this and uh, summarize it, amazing. So now I can copy it, paste it here. And now I can say, give me key sentences. Take that, paste it, boom. And I can do this with all of them. So now we're actually creating it into a presentation form. So a lot easy to digest compared to all the text that we had before. So you can take this and now go, maybe rephrase this bit, whatever it is, right? Which by the way, we can also do in this tool. So let's say if I wanna rephrase it, I can grab everything that's said here. I can go to rephraser and I can type it here and say paraphrase, actually paraphrase. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me a different way to say this and it's called fluency. I can make it sound formal. Okay, The Dark Knight by Christopher Nolan is a riveting examination of morality, justice, and courage, okay? I can make it simple so we can teach it to a five-year-old. The Dark Knight by Christopher Nolan is a thrilling look at morality, justice, and being a hero, right? Like already like, the cadence in everything changes. I can shorten this. So we already summarized it, but now we can even break it into 26 words. So it started at 100 plus words to 45 with our summary. And now we turn it into 26 words, depending on the platform you wanna use it for. So finally, I'm gonna give you one more example, which is for colorist and content creators. Okay, so this one is this tool right here. It's called Topaz Video AI. Obviously it's not free, so I purchased this. By the way, this one is not free either. So only these two open AI tools are free for now. So as colorists, most of the time, you're not gonna get access to certain content. So let's say you're building a library and you just go, man, I can't find these things on shotdeck.com because they're too new. House of the Dragon just came out. How can I get pristine, clean images? And just in general, like I'm doing a video, so I'm gonna throw in a couple of shots from House of the Dragon, but my video is shot in 4K, 10 bit, looks great. But then when I bring in this House of the Dragon video that I downloaded from YouTube, it's like low res looks crappy as hell. Look at this, 30 megs, right? So let's bring it in this tool and let's see what we can do. So check this out. I'm just gonna move through and let's park it. So obviously you're seeing the quality is not that great, right? So like, even if I park it here, the quality is, it leaves a lot to be desired. So let's do this. It's telling you, hey, the input is 1080p. What do you want the output to be? So let's just be greedy and say, give me 4X, turn it into 8K output. And now I can just hit this button, preview, watch this. Now imagine what this means for people that are working on documentaries and they're pulling content that's 320p, 480p, stuff like that, and they're reusing it. Where is this information coming from? Okay, let's keep going. Look at this. Look at all of a sudden her dress pattern. Look at the earring. Look at the detail on the edges of her collar. Even after when YouTube reduces the quality of this video that I'm gonna upload, this difference is still gonna be relative, right? And you're gonna be able to see how big this is. And this is like my day one of playing with this tool. So this is out of control. Now we don't always have to do 8K. We can get away with 4K. Like that's what I would actually do if I'm gonna be using it. Let's just park it on maybe one more shot. Let's do this one. So let's go preview this. Let me just say one thing. It is a resource hogger. It will take every single thing that your machine gives it. So. I'm assuming that PCs are gonna have a leg up, but I don't know because Mac, especially with the M2 Max chips and everything that they got going on, it could be pretty fast, but even on my $18,000, $20,000 Mac Pro that's pretty souped up, it took a while. It took like hour and 20 minutes to export an 8K version of this. And now imagine it playing back in this quality. So that's one thing, right? Like we're pixel peeping at like one to one, we're punched in. 4x and we're looking at it it's not going to be 4x punched in right and when it's playing back what is it going to be like just look at this like the dress detail where did it come from where how did it create it and that's why the previous tools 
that just did weird things like edge sharpening and all that stuff that wasn't based around AI. It was just nothing. It like it just didn't really bring out the information. It just created an illusion of information and sharpening, but not the real thing. Look at her necklace. Guys, it's 400% zoomed in, okay? It's 4X right now. Look at the detail right here. So there we are. When I first was introduced to Chat GPT by my brother, I was using it in the dumbest way possible. I was just like doing all the work myself, writing all the scripts or emails and everything. And then I would just grab them and say, rewrite it. It will just change four things. And it wouldn't really do anything. And I would be like, it's cool. Like it's fun, but whatever. It's not like as big of a deal what people are making it seem to be until one day like it clicked and I'm like, oh my God. And again, I'm at 0.1%, if that, to what these things are capable of, what I'm learning. I was just like extremely excited. And I'm like, if I'm this stoked and excited and what these things are doing for me, we have a group text, my brothers and I, and I, I just told them, I'm like, dude, just spending a couple of days with these tools, I feel like my workflow will never be the same. I also want to tell you guys, obviously this video was about AI and something that I don't really mention on my channel, but I think we have to expand. It is time to start broadening our horizon on this channel and introduce you guys to other tools that could be super beneficial because I always said from day one, my audience is not just colorist. It's never going to be that. So we have modern day filmmakers that are basically doing a lot of different things. So if you guys found this helpful, let me know if you have any specific content suggestions. Tell me about that too. If there are AI tools that I didn't even mention and are worth checking out, please let me know. I am a student at heart and I'm in it for a long run. I'm always learning, always getting stoked like when I just find something new that I know nothing about. And uh, on that note, anybody who wants to learn more about color grading or how to properly match skin tones, shot matching, and what is the right sequence of a note tree. If you want to learn any of those things and get tons of freebies from me, I have a free training. Link is in the description. Do not forget to check that out. And on that note, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video.